Hey, this is Goran with Home Smart Connect with a uh, two flat that's available in Avondale, Chicago's Avondale neighborhood. And so this is a potential rehab that someone can take this two flat and convert it to a single family. Or what's uh, popular right now these days is um, changing the first and second floor to one unit and then putting the gar uh, basement unit to be the second unit. Uh, that's pretty much what's trending right now in Chicago. So I'm gonna walk this and I'm gonna just show a few things that you really need to look for when you're looking at two flats. Um, what to look for uh, as far as uh, qualifying a property that's a good potential uh, conversion to a single family. Again, this property is available in Chicago's Avondale neighborhood. If you are interested in this, please reach out to me or text me at 773-273-9155. So as I'm walking through, I can see that the floors on this floor might be able to get saved. Um, I do see that the windows were changed at some point in time. To me, it looks like the windows are no more than, you know, eight to nine years old. They could be salvaged if someone likes the white windows on the front, uh, the white face from the street side. I'm also looking at the height here in the ceilings. It looks just about nine foot. Some nice tile there on the, whoops, nice tile there on the entry that looks like it can be preserved if someone wanted to. Walk through here again. This is what the dining room is. So th th this type of property, you know, you could open up this whole first floor layout to be completely open and then, uh, you know, toss the bedrooms onto the second floor, of course. You could have three bedrooms and two baths on the second floor. You could have plenty of room down here for a bedroom and a bathroom as well if someone wanted a four bedroom. Here's the existing kitchen. Everything looks good here. So structurally, the floors, I mean, you wanna walk through. You can see right here, they're, they're straight, there's no dips. This is something that I like to look for in, in the two flats. So structure looks really good. Structurally looks really good. Uh, one big thing that pops up all the time on the two flats are the back porches like this one. This one here, you can see it was finished. And then the staircase is, is over here. So a lot of times the, you know, you're gonna rip out these stairs anyway and incorporate this square footage into the footprint of the house. So what we want to do later when we go into the basement is make sure that this porch actually has a foundation. If, if we could tell that it's got a foundation. Um, if you do have one, then finishing off this space is only a matter of will the city allow you with the FAR requirements on the lot. Um, if you want more information on that, you could text me and ex explain that further to you, how to look up FAR and how much uh, square footage you could actually have in a two flat that could be usable. This would all get gutted, right? So again, we're not looking at much here besides the windows. On the second floor, we're gonna look at the ceiling, see if there's any telltale signs of leaking. Again, this would be all open layout. And uh, two, two ways to go about the open layout on a two flat. You could either have a beam running across the top. You'd have to have either a steel or micro lamp beam, engineered beam going across to support and then you incorporate in your layout um, any posts if need be. Or another way to do it is if you want it completely open and you're not gonna have like a bedroom in the, on the first floor, uh, then you wanna go with um, changing the floor joists once everything's gutted to I-beams, um, I joists, I want to say, TJI joists, which would span from left to right and not require any kind of support underneath. So that's one option. If you want to completely open, uh, let's say no bedrooms on the first floor, that's, your, that's the way you want to go, the route you want to go. You want to do TJI joists. This way you have a completely open floor plan and do whatever you want on the bottom here. Um, another thing I'm looking at is the stairs here. These are leaning a little bit towards the right, but not a problem to to jack up and, and bring back true. Uh, so that's okay. Um, they look great. 
you know, it depends on uh, what look you're going for here. If you want to preserve some of the house, I definitely want to preserve these stairs. They're wide enough. Um, it just depends again if you're that type of buyer that wants, uh, you know, to keep some of the old charm, right? So, I mean, definitely you could keep, like I said, that mosaic tile front and these stairs are salvageable to be refinished. Something I personally would do. Again, here on the second floor, again, you have about nine foot ceilings. Windows up here are new as well, newer. The floors you can see are in great shape. I definitely try and keep these floors. Um, one of the reasons you'd want to change it is you get rid of, you could hear as I'm walking, you could hear the squeakiness. If you did change to TJI joists on the first floor, like I mentioned, for, uh, to, for better support, you definitely would have, uh, have to rip these floors up, right, to be able to do that. So also depends on whether you want to do that or not. Um, nice little built-in here. You know, stuff like that you could keep. But again, this, you know, pull this out, not keep it in its place, but keep it and maybe repurpose it somewhere else in the property. But this whole second floor would be completely changed as well. You know, you'd come up on, uh, come up here on the stairs in the same location, and then you could have plenty of room here. This is about a 1,200 square foot per floor, so you could easily have three bedrooms and two bathrooms on this floor. Again, we're not looking at much here as far as the condition of uh, the exterior walls or you know the floors are always good to see if you could salvage them or not you're looking at the ceilings sorry you're looking at the ceilings these so far look good uh, it would be gutted of course again but I'm just looking for any signs of problems with the roof so that's one of the things you're going to want to look for as you're touring these properties, like, like right here, you know, it might be a slight leak right here. So it definitely you have some kind of problem going on here. So that's one spot in the roof. That's, that's bad. Overall, the roof doesn't look like it's leaking entirely. You know, here there's more trouble here. So it looks like the front section of the roof needs some uh, work. And then we'll go into the kitchen. Uh, in the kitchen, definitely, you can see it's got issues. Got issues in the back here with, uh, there's actually mold on this drywall. Whatever fix they did here didn't last. It looks like the roof is still leaking. So on this particular property, I'd, I'd probably say um, it's a very high chance that the roof needs to be replaced. Uh, so that's a big expense. So of course you wanna try and uh, when you're trying to narrow down which two flats to convert and try and save a little bit, keep the budget on a lower end, you want to have something that's had the roof done recently. Um, a roof tear off on a, on a size project like this, you're looking at about 10 grand, right? So you've got a 10 grand just in the roof right here to tear it off and replace it. And it could go as high as uh, 15 grand if there's multiple layers. But you know, roof access is right here. That's something I would definitely do on the due diligence period is, you know, you, you get a property like this under contract and then you want to actually walk that roof or have your inspector, of course, walk that roof. Um, porch here again, looks solid. Again, it's leaning. All these Chicago porches were built on purpose to lean because they were open at one point in time and that's for water runoff. So they wanted to have a little slope in it and have uh, the water to be able to run off and not sit on the stairs. So that, that's why these porches lean. What you want to look for is like right here, huge separation. Uh, this is typical coming off of the brick wall, the separation, that's not a big deal. Again, these, these are all items that your inspector is going to pick up, but, but not every property you're going to hire a home inspector to come take a look at, right? So it's good to get educated on what to look for. Uh, you qualify it, you think it's good, and then always, of course, you're gonna get it inspected by a home inspector uh, that, that's gonna look at it much more thoroughly for a couple of hours. You know, two to three hours is what your typical inspection is gonna last. Uh, so again, what you wanna look for here is we wanna see if there is a foundation. If we could tell if there's a foundation. 
Concrete was poured here underneath the porch, but it looks like it was poured up into the, um, the post. So to me, it looks like they poured concrete just to keep this clean. Probably eight grand, eight to nine grand just in, in foundation work. If you wanna incorporate the porch into your square footage. Uh, otherwise, a lot of people opt to, into just demolishing the back porch and, and starting from new, uh, losing that square footage on the actual layout. Um, you'd lose, you know, seven by 20, you'd lose about 150 square foot on floor one and floor two of finished space. Um, so 300 combined in the two floors. So a lot of times the people, buyers want to have that 300 square foot, right? So, so it's worth the ex extra expense of putting in 10, nine to 10 grand into the concrete foundation work to keep the existing porch. Um, so that's what you're looking at on a property like this, about nine grand to, to properly put in a foundation to incorporate this porch into the square footage. So down in the basement, what we're looking for is ceiling height. Height here looks decent, typical of a Chicago two flat or any Chicago home. Uh, you wanna look at how tall the windows are. These are nice sized. These are about, I'd say about 27 inches or so, almost two and a half feet height wise. So that's a good indication of how deep you are in the ground. So that's another thing that comes into the FAR requirements. Basically you wanna be deeper in the ground then you are above the ground for your basement, right? So here it's about halfway, that's, that's my opinion. So why, why that's important is um, if you're more above ground than you are below ground, they're gonna count that square footage against you on that FAR calculation. And so that means the basement square footage when you finish it is gonna be included into the overall allowable square footage for the entire building, which is bad. Um, most likely then you won't be able to incorporate a porch, They'll let you keep the basement, of course, finished because it's grandfathered in, but they won't let you build any other additions like that porch to incorporate into a finished space, if that makes sense. So to clarify that, you could always call me and I exp explain that further. It's a, it's a little bit complicated, but once you get the gist of it, it's pretty easy to understand. Um, we're looking at the electrical here, very outdated. I mean, this would all be replaced anyway. You got your old fuses here. I mean, that would all go, of course. You would gut this entire basement. Um, you wanna look at the dips. I mean, this is dipping quite a bit towards the middle, towards a, a most likely a floor drain, uh, which is okay for a basement. That's what you want it to do. Uh, all these mechanicals here would be gone anyway. All these pipes would be taken out because you're gonna wanna incorporate forced air system in so you can have air conditioning. Um, so all that would go anyway. But, you know, it's some evidence of mold there in the corner. So maybe water coming in. Again, that low spot is leaning all towards here. So if any water's coming in the basement, it's coming right here. This feels like the low spot. And that's why, um, you know, it started to mold there because all the water that comes into this basement is going into that corner. Um, and you can actually feel this as you're walking. Most likely there's a floor drain in this, uh, in this room right here somewhere. Uh, but it would be nice to not have drywall around the, the perimeter here so we could actually look at the foundation walls. But again, the building is standing straight and true. I really don't see any issues besides possibly having to do, you know, drain tile around is always a good idea when you finish your basement to do drain tile. Take advantage of when you're doing your rehab to put that in. It is about 7,500 to eight grand to do drain tile and put in a sump pump system. But uh, well worth it be, while you have your, um, you know, the walls opened up and, and you're finishing the basement at that time. Um, and then you could always address any cracks in the foundation with epoxy at the same time. But those are the main things. And then I'm gonna take a walk on the outside. Another huge expense on these two flats is going to be tuck pointing. Tuck pointing, you know, lately in the past couple of years, I want to say it's probably tripled in price. I mean, it, it, it's, it's gotten very expensive to do tuck pointing on, on brick buildings, on any brick house for that matter, not just a building. Um, you, you know, like I said, it's at least tripled in, in, in price in the recent years here. Okay, so you're gonna, on the outside, you're gonna look for tuck pointing. This building does need to have tuck pointing work done to it. You can see, 
actually is being washed out right there, the, the mortar. Overall, it's not bad. It's one section, one section right here that's that's really bad, but repairable. But this was tuck pointed at some point in time. It's actually looking really good so far. Uh, areas like this you want to address. I like that it's got the concrete and the, the concrete in this little ledge right here on the bottom. That definitely protected it um, over the years on the bottom. Another thing you want to look at is the concrete. Concrete looks like it was replaced probably 10 to 15 years ago. Just needs a good power wash. The front stairs here would need some kind of topping. You can see that this is a, a nice two flat with the roof section. So that part of the roof section on the on the frame part needs to be replaced for sure. You see this has got a nice gable, not typical two flat, but pretty nice. Like right here, you can see the tuck pointing where it started to get washed away. This entire side, front, front section. See the bottom here. But the rest of the tuck pointing again looks good. So, you know, this wouldn't be a, a $30,000 tuck point job. This would be more like a somewhere in the range of four to five thousand bucks to repair the tuck pointing and the brick on the side here that supports the stairs is sitting straight that would be an expensive repair as well so that looks good now the windows when they were changed they they covered up the lentils which is not good that would be the steel coming across the top of the window They cover that up. Uh, a lot of guys, when they change windows, they're not aware of the fact that you cannot cover the steel lentil without putting a weep rope to let any moisture out from back there. And inspectors will tag us on that all the time. Uh, if the lentils are bad, um, that's quite a big, big expense. Uh, the way to tell is the, your brick will have a lot of staircasing, missing mortar, it'll have a lot of cracks in the mortar. Um, I didn't see any of that on this property. So lentils are most likely good. Again, that's the steel that's across the top of windows on brick only, not on the frame section. It's basically acts as a header that supports the brick, right? So that's something to really take a look, a deep look into to make sure that it's okay because you're looking at a per window of expense of about $400. Um, and in a building like this, you know, even though the windows are brand new, you would have to take all the windows out, replace the lentils, put the windows back in or replace with new, uh, might as well, if you at that point change it to new. Um, so, you know, 25 windows or so at 400 bucks a pop for lentils, uh, you do the math, I mean, that's 10K right there just for something so simple that could have been saved by not covering it with capping, right? So uh, again, that was cheap at one point in time, but now it's expensive, just like the tuck pointing is in any brickwork. But, you know, here, my opinion is on a property like this, you've got about four, four grand worth of tuck pointing work to be done, which is absolutely, you know, affordable for a project this size. Again, this is... Uh, Typically what you would do, I'd like to be able to get up on the roof. A lot of times you'll, you'll have access like there is up there um, and you like it, you come back and bring a ladder and before you pay an inspector to come take a look at it, you know, you walk it with, with your realtor, with, with me of course, right? I'm your realtor. If you're going to be doing stuff like this, I'd like you to call me and I'd help you out and find a place like this. If you're interested in this specific property or any Chicago two flat for that matter that you'd like to flip and you want, um, you know, I don't consider myself the authority in two flats, but I'm very specialized in Chicago two flats. 
and very knowledgeable in them. So I'd like to be able to use my experience to help you out in finding your next property, your next project, whether you're an investor or you're looking to live in a property like this and convert it to a huge single family home. Below the video, there are gonna be links to a checklist, a checklist of items to look for in two flats. That'd be very helpful for you to take with you on uh, viewing two flat properties. I'll throw in a checklist. I'll throw in uh, a link to uh, a way to subscribe to all the two flats that are coming out in the Chicago neighborhood, Chicago area. Um, so you can get a list of all two flats as they come out and hit the market, be subscribed to that. And then uh, this particular, somewhere in the link, there's also gonna be this exact property if you want more information on it, like the price and uh, the exact address, of course. Uh, just uh, go ahead and click the links below or above somewhere on this video, you'll find those links. And again, please watch out for my videos, subscribe to my YouTube channel, because I do video walkthroughs like this all the time. And um, hopefully, you know, you can pick up a few pointers and save a few thousand bucks here or there by uh, gaining you know, uh, knowledge through watching these videos, hopefully. Uh, that's why I do them. So again, my name is Goran with HomeSmart Connect. My company for doing two flats is Two Flat Conversions, LLC. Um, again, please sign up for that list. Reach out to me, text me, call me, email me. Uh, there's plenty of ways to reach out to me. Uh, just look at the links throughout the video. Thanks for watching the video this long. I know it was a little bit longer. I hope you found value out of it. Again, if you did, give me a thumbs up like the video and please subscribe. Thanks.